allow me to demonstrate. Hey fiddlers, welcome to today's fiddle video. Today we're going to be talking about playing backup for jigs on the fiddle. We fiddlers are often the ones holding down the melody, but occasionally another fiddler comes along and though we may begrudge them the melody, we decide we're going to be the bigger person and play backup for them. Actually, backup is a lot of fun and I hope that this video gives you a few tips that will help you just get a little more comfortable with playing in the background for jigs. If you'd like sheet music and practice tracks for the tune that I'm going to be using to demonstrate this, it is called Off She Goes and you'll find a link for it in the description. So before we start, we're going to lay a little groundwork. What are the basic things that we're going to need to figure out so that we can play backup for a tune? We're talking specifically today about major tunes and I'm hoping we will get into minor tunes before too long. So for those of you of a melancholy disposition, I'm hoping we will have you covered in a future video. So to start off, the first thing we're going to try and figure out is what are the one, four, and five chords of the key that we are in? You might have heard of the one, four, and five before. They are the bread and butter of playing backup for major tunes. So the first thing we're going to want to do is figure out what key is this tune in? There are many different ways that you might try to figure out the key you're in, but one of my favorite ways, and the way that many people who work on tunes by ear figure this out, would be to just play some notes while you're listening to the tune and see which one of them feels like the root note of the tune. Allow me to demonstrate. Once you find that root note of the tune, you've got a better sense of what key you're in. And we landed on D. It just felt like home. It felt right. And this tune that we're going to be backing up today is in D major. Once you've figured that out, you are a large part of the way towards being able to play backup for this tune. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to figure out the one, four, and five notes or chords for the key that we're in. If you're not that familiar with one, four, and five, have no fear. At its most basic level, the one, four, and five are the first note of the scale, so the D, which we just found for, you know, the key of D major. Then the fourth note of that scale, one, two, three, four, which is G, that's the four note of the scale. And the fifth note, which is one, two, three, four, five, A, that is our five note. One, D, four, G, and five, A. And while we're at it, let's figure out some double stops that you could play that are also one, four, and five double stops. And here's what I mean by that. So for the D chord, you take any two notes from the D arpeggio and you'll have your D double stop. So here we have a D, F sharp, and A. Let's go ahead and play D and A. And there's your D double stop, kind of your D chord. You could also play D with the A on the lower string, which is your first finger on the G string. because I like when I'm playing backup often to be playing lower on the fiddle, sort of out of the way of the melody line, if possible. Now let's figure out our G chord. So based on the G arpeggio, which would be something like this, we take two of those notes. Let's take G and D. Those are on the lower strings. That gives you your four double stop, kind of your four chord. And now let's figure out our five chord. Remember, our five note is A. So let's build an arpeggio off that. Again, we might want to try the lower octave. So let's try starting on that first finger on the G string. That's also an A. We've got A, C sharp, E. Let's just take A and E. So that first finger over both those bottom strings, that A and E, 
that can be your five double stop or five chord. All right, so we've got our one, four, and five notes, which are D, G, let's do the open G, and A, let's do the first finger on G. And we've got our one, four, and five double stops. So the first one would be the one chord, a D chord, which is D, and the first finger on the G, which is an A. Then our four double stop, a G double stop, which is open G and open D. And our five double stop, which is an A double stop. So an A, which is your first finger on G, and an E, which is your first finger on D. And that's your one, four, and five. All right, so now we have the one, four, and five notes and double stops that we are going to be using to back up this tune. Now that the notes are out of the way, let's think about the rhythm of the tune. For jigs, we're thinking in six, eight time. So jigs go one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six. You kind of think of them in these little packages of three eighth notes. One, two, three, four, five, six. And the first note in each set of three is kind of a little more important. And that's where the beat of the tune is. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. So if you were playing on the beat, it would go something like this. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. But if you're playing that basic jig rhythm, that one, two, three, four, five, six, etc., it would sound more like this. So we have our notes and chords on the one side. We've got our jig rhythm on the other side. Let's put this into practice. So our simplest backup option, believe me, this actually can sound really good, is to play just the one note or double stop and hold that out. So you're not changing your bow too often. These are just long tones. And just play that sort of as a drone through the tune. And this is what that would sound like. sounds pretty good and we don't have to work too hard at that. Our second backup option would be to play that one note or double stop on the beat. So remember how we were thinking in one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six. We're taking that first note in each of those sets of three. That's where the bow change is going to be. One, two, three, four, five, six. And this is how that might sound. Our third option would be to play that one note or double stop and play it with that jig rhythm that we talked about. So one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four. Option number four. This is where the one, four, and five chord start to come into play. And we really have to tune in, listen to the melody, and see which one of those do we want to use because we're going to be changing throughout the tune. I have found it kind of helpful to think about these double stops in terms of the sort of moods that they evoke for me in my mind. For me, the one double stop. <laughs> It feels very homey, very settled. The four double stop, it feels sort of wistful and far away to me. And the five double stop feels almost anticipatory and tense, like it wants to resolve. That's how I look at it, at least. But they might have different adjectives or feelings to you, so it's good to kind of define that for yourself. When you have those moods in mind, you can kind of start to match those double stops or those notes to the parts of the tune that have those moods. This is at least how it works for me. If there's a part of the tune that sounds a little more wistful, like it's far from home, then you might try a four double stop. Or if it feels tense, like it wants to resolve, you might try a five double stop. One of the factors here really is that the notes in the tune might be spelling out 
parts of a chord. So for example, if the tune is going that's reminiscent of the D arpeggio. So it makes sense that a D double stop would work there. But my mind generally does not work that quickly, so I just have to kind of listen for the mood of the tune at different points and by trial and error figure out what chords fit into the melody. One simpler option could be you could actually have sheet music that has chords on it and that can be very helpful. Then you can just follow along with your fiddle chords. However you figure it out, here are the next few ways that you could play back up for a tune using all three of those notes double stops, chords, however you want to think of it. Again, you could do long tones. So hold out one note or double stop until it sounds like the next chord has come along and then switch to either the four or the five. This isn't based so much on the beat or on the rhythm. You're just mainly listening for where the melody changes. And it might sound something like this. would be to play one note or double stop per beat, but you're switching again between the one, four, and five. So here's how that would sound. And the last option we're going to try is again going to that jig rhythm, that one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, but switching up whether we're doing the one or the four or the five. <laughs> Lastly, I just want to go quickly over some backup etiquette. When you're playing backup, you do want to generally stay in the background. This is why I like to play lower on the fiddle and also it's good to back off on the volume a little bit. You don't want to be really digging in, um, you just want to be sort of this nice backdrop to the melody. Also it depends on what sorts of sessions you're playing at, whether backup is actually going to be very welcome. A lot of Irish sessions, for example, are very melody focused and you might not want to add too much to the backup. So you always want to read the room and just figure out, is this a good time for me to break out my backup skills? All right, fiddlers, that does it for today's fiddle video. I hope you liked it. This is by no means the be all and end all guide to backup for jigs or it for backup in major keys, but hopefully it gives you a good starting place. Again, if you would like sheet music and practice tracks for the tune that I used to demonstrate these ideas, it's called Off She Goes, and you'll find a link for that in the description. You'll also find a link for all kinds of other fiddle tunes as well. Have a wonderful day, happy fiddling, and I will see you next time.